Hello, I'm Andrew Heimlich with the Fire Oven Association for Music Education and this is a eight-part video series regarding first steps in music, specifically preschool and beyond. It's an eight-part workout that helps students become tuneful, beatful, and artful. This manual, as I said in the past videos, is, is made to start with ages three, but most of us who teach elementary music would be starting with kindergarten students. And even though this manual is geared more towards kindergarten and first grade, uh, the idea of being tuneful, beautiful, artful would still be something that you would continue to work on with your second through fifth grade or sixth grade students. You would also be working on literacy and other activities if you know anything about or Schulvert or Dal Crows or folk dancing or singing games. Those activities you would still be doing in the classroom with second through fifth grade, but with the focus that you want your students to be tuneful, beautiful, and artful. Today the focus is on part three of the A-part workout still being tuneful and that is what John calls simple songs. And simple songs are long working on long-term memory. If the fragment singing that we worked on the last video is short-term memory, this would be long-term memory. And when you are teaching these songs a long-term memory, you're going to be using what we call the whole song approach. So instead of singing by rote or having them echo a song or phrase by phrase, you're going to just sing the whole song. And as you're singing it, the students will be doing some type of activity, a movement or maybe a game. And for example, the song, frog in the meadow, can't get him out, take a little stick and stir him about. And you would have the student, in that particular game, the students would use a body part and pretending it's a stick to try to get the frog out of the grass. And they're not going to sing anything during that class. They're just going to be doing different body parts. Let's try our thumb. Frog in the meadow, can't get him out. Let's try our shoulder. Frog in the meadow, can't get him out. Let's try our head. Frog in the meadow. So you're singing the song, the students are listening, and they're just doing a moving. Uh, if it's a game, then they would be playing the game while you are doing all the singing. Again, the students are not singing anything. Research has shown that students actually assimilate and actually learn better the whole song approach rather than learning it by phrase by phrase. Now, of course, when songs are harder and they have multiple verses or so forth in older students, then you might probably use the, whole, the rote uh, echo part, like if you're teaching around. But with kindergarten and first graders and you're doing these simple songs, whole song approach is much better. So let's say that's two classes, two or three classes where they do the activity and you're singing the song. And then eventually what will happen is that you will review the song that day, third, fourth lesson, and you will then ask the students to sing and you're just listening. Remember John Farben's golden rule is that you sing for the class, not with the class. So you're not going to sing with the students while they're singing the song. And what might happen is they're going to start singing the song incorrectly and your temptation is going to jump in and sing with them. And John likes to say, the quote is, don't do that because you're temporarily satisfying your frustration. <laughs> so what you need to do is, after the song is over, say, boys and girls, I'm going to take the song back and I will sing the song while you just listen. Because obviously they need some more repetition in getting the song learned in their brain. But eventually, if the majority of them are able to sing it uh, correctly without your assistance, then after you do the whole group, a few lessons down, you'll do small groups, and then eventually the hope is that you'll have them sing them individually. Remember, most learning takes place when students perform by themselves. These songs, these simple songs, should only about be three pitches each. So John's philosophy is starting with Mi Re Do, which later gets on into his Kodai background um, and, and being Do focused with his system of conversational solfege. But if you use a Mi Sol La song, that is totally fine. You don't want to do something that has a lot of chromaticism or large leaps. It needs to be a simple song, short, maybe uh, four phrases of four beats or eight beats each. And it's important that you're singing in a placement with their head voice. So normally we do songs that are in the key of F or key of G. So hopefully those activities will be helpful for you and where students are building independence as musicians.